Hi guys, how are you? My name is Samantha Glockner. I'm a published author in Fort Worth, Texas, and today I'm going to talk to you about overcoming fears. Due to events that are currently going on in the world right now, I have modified my original speech to fit the needs of those who are being affected by their fear from this virus. So when you look at fear, there's many different types of fear. It comes in many different forms, shapes, and each one has to be handled in its own way. I feel as if this one is the one that is most important though with the time being. When you finally feel that you're tired of being afraid and tired of feeling negative, tired of feeling sick mentally, emotionally, and physically, you're going to eventually want to change this mindset that you're currently holding. In order to do that, to take that very first step towards this barrier that's blocking you, the first thing you're going to want to do is understand energy. Energy is inside of me, you, everyone around us, everywhere around us, and everything we see, and every single kind of thought, emotion, and action, they all hold energy. Our energy is very intense. We know that all energy has a cause and effect. We know that energy is constantly moving, it cannot be destroyed, it can only be contained. When you think about this energy that's inside yourself, you have to understand that the energy that you're emitting through these thoughts these emotions and these actions are way more powerful than the energy around you would ever be. So you're able to manipulate it and construct the energy to follow whatever it is that you're feeling, thinking, or doing at the time. A good example of that would be when you are admitting love. It's one of the highest frequencies there is. And we know that love is to be similar as magic. It can make miracles happen. It can make people do things that they normally wouldn't do. It can make people stop addictions. It can make them change themselves from the inside out for the person they love. It can cause women to have superpower strength and lift cars off their husbands when they get stuck underneath the frame because the jack gave out. Love can make us do anything. Love also blocks out all the negative aspects of a person, a place, or a thing and allows us to only see the light inside of them. When you think of the opposite of that frequency, a lot of people like to think that it's hate, but truly the source of hate comes from fear. It's the product of all of our negative thoughts, emotions, and actions. If you are having a negative feeling, it's because you're afraid of something. Your job is to figure out why it is that you're afraid. For example, if you're feeling afraid right now, a lot of people are claiming that they're afraid of the virus. But truly, it has nothing to do with the virus at all. It wouldn't matter if it was a virus or a guy walking around the street threatening to hurt you, you would just still be in the same situation that you're in currently. And everyone keeps saying, well, you know, I can't wait for the virus to go away because of my fear will go away. But really, it's just going to be switched to something else. It won't go away until you fully defeat it inside of yourself. When you're dealing with fear and you're emitting it on such that high frequency, it has the exact same mental, emotional, and physical effects as love does. When you think about how powerful love is, it can give you an idea of what you're doing every time you're emitting a thought or an emotion, especially an emotion that's rooted around this fear. Every time that you think, feel, or do something in response to this virus, you're fueling it. You're making it more powerful. What you're also doing is you're constructing a reality to meet those needs. Whether you're thinking in love or fear, you're correct your mind will associate that you know what's best for it and it's going to react appropriately to whatever it is that you're giving out. So let's say that you're either at a supermarket or you're at a gas station or you're barbecuing in your front yard and people come up to you and because of that frequency you're emitting you're only going to attract people who are thinking, feeling, and acting the same way as you. When you run into them you're going to hear them talk and they're going to be doing the exact same things, reacting the same way. And instead of looking at them thinking that they need to calm down, they're making themselves sick, or they're just not feeling well emotionally stable, you're not going to look at that. You're going to look at these people and it's going to be to you like, ah, oh, I'm on the right track. Someone else is afraid too. That means I must be afraid. But unfortunately, it's not just going to be a mutual understanding, that person is going to instill more fear in you. And in return, you'll be instilling that fear into your children, your pets, 
your spouse, your parents, your family members. You're going to have everyone in your life that you know panicking because they know you love them and you wouldn't want anything bad to happen to them. So they're going to match your emotion. If you're afraid, they must be afraid. We are very easily affected by other people's energy and emotions and actions when we're not sure how to control our own. We rely on other people sometimes to stand for us when we feel like we can't. And when you're feeling afraid, you feel out of control. When you feel out of control, you want someone who knows what they're doing to step in and take over the situation because you truly feel like you freeze. You don't know what to do. When you're feeling out of control, it's because you're uneducated about a situation. When you're dealing with a fear on this level, it is a type of fear that requires your effort as well as you allowing someone else to have half that effort too. So let's say that you're in a vehicle and it's icy and you're the passenger and someone you really, really love and trust is driving. And before you get in the car, I ask you, do you trust this person with your life? more than likely would say yes. Now let's say I get into the car with you and sit in the back seat. And the entire ride, you're sitting there and you're freaking out, you're panicking, you're trying to say, you know, well, let me drive, you don't know what you're doing, you know, slow down. You're obviously showing signs that truly you are afraid. Even though before we got in the car, you said that you trusted this person with your life. You're afraid because you feel like regardless if something good or bad happened, that that person who's driving wouldn't be able to handle it the way you would. Therefore, you fear it because you're out of control. When we are put to the test of things that we say we have faith in, say that we have trust in, it really shows in that moment. And this is an example of the same exact thing. In order to overcome this fear, you're going to have to understand your own power. And you are very powerful. We are extremely capable of doing amazing, miraculous things every single moment of every single day. For a lot of people growing up, they hear things as we are limitless and we can do anything we put our mind to. Other people, however, sometimes are brought up under the idea that they are limited and they are flawed and they are just a human and they can't do anything that they can't even help themselves. And they're always looking for other people to make them feel stable. And all it does is make them more unstable because they don't know who to listen to anymore. So having that grounding of yourself and to listen to yourself is so important when you're overcoming fears. Only you will be able to tell yourself why you're fearing something. The exact reason that you need to heal inside of yourself to get over it. And you're going to find your inner power and realize that in this case, 50% of what you're going through right now is your own responsibility. And we don't like to admit that. When we're doing something that's causing us mental, emotional, or physical harm or to others, because a lot of times when people are afraid, they like to take it out on people who are close to them, family members, pets, kids, spouse. And... When we take that energy out on those we love, it makes us lose trust in ourselves even more because we know that what we're doing in that moment is wrong. And for some reason, this fear, this intense energy on this negative level consumes us to the point that we forget who we are and we forget that other people in the world matter outside of us. It puts us into a state of survival, it's life or death. And unfortunately, when we're dealing with fear, we have this weird concept that if we survive whatever is trying to get to us right this minute, it's like we won life. And that's not true. If it's not this coronavirus, there's going to be something else that you're just as fearful of. You're not afraid of the virus. You're afraid of transitioning from this life to what's next and until you do your part and you feel comfortable with knowing what you can do to prevent that from happening you're not going to be able to get through this properly 
And I don't want to see that. I don't want to see anyone struggling right now. I don't want to see anyone mentally or emotionally unstable. I don't want to see anyone running to the stores trying to buy the last supplies. I don't want to walk into a store and see another elderly lady looking at the shelves and she's not able to find anything to eat. That's very sad. And when you realize this power in yourself, you're going to care more about others. That is part of your 50%. So when you're looking at this situation and you ask yourself, well, what can I do? Well, right now, you can practice good hygiene. I'm not telling you to go around people who are sick or ill. Stay away from them. Keep your family away from people who are showing symptoms of being sick. But make sure that you're checking in on the people that you do know in your life. That outside this virus, you do care about a lot. If you know anyone who is older and they might not be able to get to the store to get supplies, go get them and drop them off on their porch. That's something you can do. That is emitting love. That is raising your vibration. That's going to be great for you. That is part of your part, is making sure that others are okay. Make sure that you're filling your time from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed with things that are positive, healthy. They'll either help your self-improvement or they'll help others grow. If you find yourself always telling people when they ask you, why did you never write the book you always talk about? And you say, well, I don't have time. Well, right now, for the next, we don't know how long, we have a lot of time to do those things that we once said that we didn't have. And that's amazing. That's a positive outlook on this. We can take this time to heal ourselves, to heal our pets, to heal our friends and our family. We can do a lot of things, a lot of positive things. And right now, your part is to hold yourself in a positive vibration. You know, when you're going through something like this, your part sometimes can be a hard thing for people to understand. And the best way to explain it is, imagine you are going to go on a boat. And you know that no matter what happens on the way from point A to B, you're going to get there no matter what. And before you board the ship, the captain comes out and he tells you, this is a special boat. When you get on the boat, you have no control and I'm not driving. The divine is driving. I am just here to make sure everything goes the way it's supposed to go. He's your guide your angel, if you will. And when you're on this ship, your emotions, your thoughts, and your actions, whether you frequent love or you release fear, it will change the water to match that frequency. So let's say that you get on the boat and you try emitting love and you enjoy every single moment. No matter what happens, no matter if it gets delayed, no matter if something breaks on the ship, it doesn't matter what goes on around this journey. You know, because you have faith, that you're going to make it from A to B, one way or another. So you remain calm, you remain happy. In return, the water remains calm and happy. And you have a smooth sail all the way from A to B. And you get off the port of B, and you look at the captain and say, that wasn't so bad. He say, no, it wasn't. But let's say you go back, and instead of emitting love, you decide to emit fear. And every thought, action, and emotion that you're releasing, the whole entire trip, is negative. Well, that water is going to start thrashing around. It's going to get crazy and mucky. You're not going to be able to see anything. And it's going to start messing with the, you know, the path of the boat. And the more that you fear that, because now you're seeing the results of your fear coming to life in front of you, you're starting to understand, materialistically building in front of you, how intense your fear really is and what it's capable of doing. It's not going to necessarily make you stop. It's going to make you fear more. Because now, instead of just being afraid of being out of control of the ship or what's going to happen based off your thoughts, fearing yourself there, now you're fearing this water that's getting worse and worse and worse every single second. Pretty soon, that water's gonna get into the boat and it's gonna sink it. 
but you still have to get from A to B. So you're going to have to swim. And now you're even more afraid. Now the water's horrible. You lost your boat. You don't know how you're going to make it. You don't know what you're going to do. You just know you're going to get there one way or another. And you're going to fear it more. And all of a sudden, the realization that you can't see the bottom is going to freak you out even more. And in that moment, you're going to be mad at yourself. Because in that moment, when you finally are crawling onto the shore of point B, you're going to look back and realize that the whole entire journey was up to you. And you would have made it from A to B, no matter which way. But it's your choice if you walk and you admit love, or you're dragged and you admit fear. Either way, you're going to get where you're meant to be in life. You're either going to expand and grow by your own choice, or you're going to be forced to do it through the choice of the divine. That is your part. That is all you can do. In this situation, the only thing you can do is control getting from A to B. You control the water. Don't be dragged through the situation. This could go on for what they're predicting months. There's going to be a point when you're constantly in a negative mood that you're going to get tired of it. It's just natural. You're going to want to change up and you're going to want to laugh again. You're going to want to feel relaxed again. You're going to want to sleep at night. You're going to want to eat. You're going to want to do all these things. And when you're dealing with fear, it actually weakens your immune system. So every time you are doing something right now in the face of fear and you are acting on that emotion, you are actually making yourself more likely able to get this virus that you fear so much of getting. When you emit things on a high frequency such as love, it boosts your immune system. So even if right now all of this sounds crazy and you don't want to do it for the mental and emotional benefits, do it for your physical health. If you are truly as afraid as you are all saying you are, then raise your vibration. Do your part on this journey. Raise other people. Make other people feel better. There is no reason that a single person should be in that much terror right now. So, when you are moving on to the part that after you've done your part, after you've done all those things, it comes to the other 50%. And that is our fate in the divine. The easiest way to let that go is to think this. If it is your time to go, nothing can stop it. If it isn't your time to go, nothing will change it. You could be fearful of this virus the entire time it's going on. Not get it. Look at it and go, wow, I shouldn't have feared anything. Walk away three days later and get in a car accident and not survive. Just because you make it through what is going on right now doesn't mean that you've won life and you're going to live forever. And that's it seems like a big deal to a lot of people is they think that if they come out on top right now, then they're good for life. So when you're releasing this and you accept that, it's important to remember that when lessons like this are put in front of us, they're for many reasons for our growth and our expansion. But the main thing that fear teaches us is trust in ourself and trust in a higher power. When you're dealing with fear, those are two things that you really, really need. And both are found within you. You don't need anything to get through this fear but yourself. You are that powerful. And your faith can be that strong. You just have to you know, live the faith that you say you have so highly. It's very important right now. When you first start transitioning from being fearful to being unfearful, you might notice that it's going to take a little bit of practice. And it is, because when you think about how your brain works, it's easiest to think of it like a computer system. And let's say you're using that system to play a video game. And you know that when you hit X, that character on the screen is going to take off running. So as you play this game more and more, and you play it every day, and you get used to the settings, you're going to get trust in yourself to know that whenever your character needs to run in the game, you're going to hit the X button, and you also trust the system. 
that the character is going to run. And you have faith in this. Now let's say that you get tired of it and say, okay, you know what, when I hit X, I want him to run two times faster. You're improving him. So you go into your settings and you program that. And it's going to take you a while to get used to doing something else whenever you hit it. And you're going to have to be like, oh yeah, I have to, you know, just keep trying and trying and trying. But you're going to notice when you're going through this transitioning of fear to non fear that the very first time you alter your thinking, it's going to make that fear irrational, which is a good thing for you. It's not going to make it irrational to make you feel silly or weird for feeling fear in the first place, but it's going to help you make that fear a lot smaller. It's going to allow you to look at it from another angle. Once you start changing your thinking of it, and once you give this a try, you're going to immediately, after the first time, see results. And you're going to become very attached to those results because you're going to be proud of yourself. Because you're going to look back at how you were first reacting when this was all brought about. And now you can look at yourself tomorrow when you wake up and realize that for the first time in weeks you woke up and your jaw wasn't clenched and you actually slept for a whole eight hours and you fell asleep very fast and then you're going to wake up and realize that that day is easier to handle. The more times throughout the day that you do alter your mind and your emotions and your actions to emit love instead of that fear, it's going to become a lot easier and eventually you're going to get used to the program and the rest of your life is just going to follow this progressive action and everything about you is going to start expanding and growing. Once you overcome this fear or any fear, fear isn't going to mean so much to you anymore. It's going to be something that brings up some kind of emotion in you and you're going to be able to evaluate it understand why it's there and you're going to immediately be able to look at it as an irrational fear and overcome it. These big mountains that are standing between you right now and happiness and a stress-free life and your untapped potential are going to seem like little bitty barriers that pretty soon in your near future you're just going to be walking over casually as if they're nothing. When you're dealing with yourself we like to look at ourselves right now on this plane as a whole. From now on, when you look at yourself, I want you to look at yourself as a pond. And going into those ponds are three different streams. One belongs to your mind, your body, and your soul. When one of those streams aren't moving as quickly as the other ones, it's going to make the water slow down. And it's going to start affecting the other stream currents. Eventually, that water's going to still, and it's going to get stagnant, and no one's going to want to be around it. It's contaminated, it's dirty, it's filthy, and it will only cleanse itself when the water starts flowing again. That's exactly how the energy inside of you works. When the energy is constantly progressing, constantly going, and it doesn't stay stagnant from negativity, negative emotions, negative actions, it's going to just filter it all out. Yeah, it might take a minute. It's not going to happen overnight. But you're going to see progress every single day, just like that pond would, just like those streams would. That in itself should give you hope. We can look at nature for a lot of things to teach us about ourselves. It's everywhere. There is guidance everywhere. Always make sure that you see it. As for this virus, this is the year that the world had to take a break. We can learn many things from fear about this event that's going on. I mean, you know, there's so many things that people are afraid of right now. There's so many different things that are going on right now for everyone. Everyone's experiencing something different. And when you look at fear from that standpoint, it makes you feel differently about the people who are being affected by what's going on. You'll start looking at it from a selfless point of view 
and not everything's are gonna be about you anymore. And you're gonna wanna bring other people peace. And I hope you can. The things that we thought we feared before this, things such as separation, racism, homophobia, religion separation, Whatever it may be, there's always something going on. Always someone against someone. Those things right now, they just don't seem to really matter so much. Because everyone's fear of those things has now been replaced with this ginormous fear that seems to overtake everything else in your life. And that alone should show you how silly fear is. It's silly enough that the minute that something better comes along, your focus changes to that. Which means... We never really cared about the first problem to begin with. This situation has caused a lot of chaos and a lot of pain mentally, emotionally, and physically to a lot of people. But that doesn't mean that we have to remain that way. The way that we walked into this event, this virus, does not mean that it has to be the way that we walk out. We could walk out of this and take this time and use it to better ourselves in so many ways. I hope that you guys do take the chance into expanding, overcoming, growing, learning, sharing, and loving. I hope that through this it does a lot of changes. And I hope that none of you ever have to live another day of your life affected by a fear such as this. Nobody deserves that. We all deserve peace. That's the only way that we will ever give peace to someone else. Thank you for your time.